the whole 30 seconds interspersed with less intense recovery periods. VO2 max, maximal oxygen uptake, is the maximum amount of oxygen your body can use during intense exercise. It's a key indicator of cardiovascular fitness and endurance, measuring how efficiently your heart submaximal, so 80 to 100% of VO2 max bursts of activity that last 60 to 240 seconds interspersed with less intense recovery periods. So on a four, standard 400 meter track, just to give us a little bit of a visual, you know, one, a four minute mile would be fantastic for most people, although people run faster than that, of course. So that's four 60 second laps, but that's back to back to back. MICT, okay, this moderate intensity continuous training is steady state cardio, sometimes called zone two cardio these days on the internet which is performed continuously for 20 to 60 minutes at moderate intensity of 40 to 60% of VO2 max. Let's ask the question that I think many of people are wondering about, which is, is it better, meaning do you burn more fat if you do your exercise fasted? And fasted in this respect could be that you wake up in the morning, you've been fasting all night, you just hydrate and you exercise, probably not having eaten anything for anywhere from three to 24 hours or maybe even more. Will you burn more fat if you exercise without in eating anything first? Fat and protein doesn't lead to as great increases in insulin as other things. And indeed, insulin will prevent fat oxidation. I want to be really clear. The burning part of fat in the cell, the, the movement of the fatty acid and into mitochondria and the conversion to ATP, insulin inhibits that process. You can find a number of examples where eating before exercise reduces the amount of fat that's oxidized during the exercise. And you can also find a lot of studies showing that eating during exercise will, or prior to exercise, to their particular diet, it doesn't really matter which diet you follow. You can still get a caloric deficit and you get weight loss. My preferred way of eating is to go low or no carbohydrate throughout the day for alertness, to get that adrenaline release and the focus that goes with it, et cetera, the ability and to think and move and do all the things I need to do during the day. And then I eat carbohydrates at night because it facilitates the transition to sleep. Push-ups, sit-ups, whatever it happens to be, that anaerobic exercise that's of higher intensity or sprints, taps into glycogen stores during the movement and will burn more energy per unit time than moderate intensity. The percentage of fat that you burn after high intensity exercise is actually greater. In other words, you burn a lot of glycogen during the high intensity exercise. And then after the exercise, the post-exercise oxygen consumption, as it's sometimes called, goes up. We know this after you train intensely, that post-exercise oxygen consumption goes up. Cardiovascular or weight training exercise that we should perhaps look through the lens of this adrenaline system and how it interacts with fat stores and think about low, medium, or high intensity exercise, whether or not we show up to that fasted or not. Turns out showing up to that fasted can be useful if you start with high intensity movements and then move into lower intensity type exercise. If you're going to go long duration, it probably doesn't matter unless you're exercising longer than 90 minutes, whether or not you eat or not. Get your sleep right. Get your light exposure right. Avoid bright light in your eyes at times you want to be asleep. And get bright light in your eyes at times you want to be awake. So get your sleep right. The other thing is essential fatty acids. I talked about this in the food and mood episode, but I also talked about it during the hormones episodes. We need fatty acids. They are vital to so many aspects of our health. You don't have to get them from supplements. You can if you want to, but you need to get them from your food. They are essential. There's a reason there's an E, the essential part there. Of the fatty acids, there are multiple kinds, but for the antidepressant effects or the, the levels of fatty acids that will promote good mood and also healthy metabolism and will start to shift the needle in the right direction on blood-borne cardiovascular factors, the key thing is to get the levels of EPA that you ingest above 1,000 milligrams per day. So that doesn't mean just taking 1,000 milligrams or more of, say, fish oil or krill oil or whatever your preferred source is. It means getting above 1,000 milligrams of EPA, which may require that you ingest more essential fatty acids than just 1,000 milligrams per day. EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, is an omega-3 fatty acid found in fish and krill oil, known for supporting heart health and reducing inflammation and supports metabolism. 
And then finally, you can't really position yourself to have a strong metabolism if your iodine levels aren't correct and your thyroid levels aren't correct. You can overdo iodine, so you don't want to do that. A lot of table salt has iodine added to it, but some people need to add iodine they, by ingesting things like kelp, etc. But one of the best ways to support the thyroid system and metabolism in general is to make sure you're getting enough selenium, sometimes called selenium, each day. Simple way to do that is to ingest the highest concentration of selenium food that I'm aware of, which is Brazil nuts. One or two or three of those per day, you'll have more than enough selenium uh, to meet the thyroid needs. So again, sleep, sufficient EPAs, glutamine, if you have issues with leaky gut or sugar cravings can really help. Get your gut microbiome right. I may have uh, missed saying that, but get your gut microbiome right. That does not necessarily mean you need to ingest probiotics. You can if you want to, but you can also just simply ingest a serving or two of fermented foods per day. That can greatly assist. So things like sauerkraut, kimchi, every culture has a different um, source or sources of fermented foods. Those can really help the, the gut microbiome. And then make sure that your thyroid hormone is supported through the ingestion of sufficient iodine, not too much, and sufficient selenium, not too much. Okay, sleep, EPA, glutamine, fermented foods, iodine, selenium. Since today we're talking about accelerating fat loss through the use of science-based tools, I want to emphasize a study that was published in Nature just a couple of years ago showing exactly how cold increases metabolism and fat loss. So we have several kinds of fat, three kinds in fact. We have white fat, white adipose tissue, and we have brown fat or brown adipose tissue. And there's a third kind, which is beige adipose tissue. White fat is the type that we traditionally think of as fat, subcutaneous fat. And it is not particularly rich in mitochondria. It is there as an energy storage site and we have to mobilize the fat out, as we talked about before, and burn it up elsewhere. Brown fat largely exists between our shoulder blades and on the back of our neck, between the scapulae, and it's rich with mitochondria, which is why it's called brown fat. And brown fat has a particular biochemical cascade whereby it can take food energy, and can, it can take food, basically, break it down, and convert it into energy within those cells. And there's some additional steps involved, but unlike fatty acids from white fat, which have to travel elsewhere, get broken down in mitochondria and, and convert into ATP, et cetera, used by the mitochondria rather, brown fat is thermogenic. It can actually use energy directly. It skips a step, and I don't want to get diverted by going into all the, the biochemistry of it. Beige fat is sort of in between. It's white. If you want to trigger the shiver, what you want to do is to get into the cold and then get out of the cold and typically not dry off and then get back into the cold and out of the cold. That will definitely stimulate more shivering than just getting into the cold itself. Now, one thing that's very interesting and cannot be overlooked is this issue of how much energy you burn during 